welcome back to my channel or if you're new here i'm kayla and this is mostly my beauty channel but i also do random videos every now and then like this one which is my second story time so i thought since you guys like to see those kind of videos that i would do another one that's a little less depressing this one is just downright hilarious now a lot of you may not know that i have mitochondrial disease i do plan on doing a video in the future um totally dedicated to my journey with this illness and all of the things that i've been through medically there's been a lot of times that i've been on a lot of different medications mostly just to control the symptom that are caused by the mitochondrial disease because there is currently no cure for this disease but it is manageable with medications and surgery lifestyle changes and things of that nature i've had to take medications regularly for the last 10 years now that we've got kind of like a little bit of a backstory we can move on into the incident that this story time video is about so i suggest you grab your popcorn and a drink and hang out with me while I tell you a really funny story. <laughs> this incident happened towards the end of May of 2012. So quite a few years ago. And some of those medications that I was on then, I don't currently take anymore, but I was on a lot of different medications. Honestly, I don't even remember the names of half of them. When I was really sick, I was put on an antidepressant medication, but I cannot remember which one because they switched them up so much. And I was also taking um, pain medication. And we all know that pain medication can screw with your brain too so on that morning i actually forgot to take some of my morning med i honestly didn't even realize that i'd forgotten to until the evening time when i was supposed to take my nighttime meds and i was like oh crap i forgot to take them this morning i'll just take them now i just went ahead and took those few pills that I had forgotten to take that morning when I took my other nightly meds. Then I just went to bed and I was laying there um, watching a movie, probably Netflix. The movie that I was watching was almost over and so I just happened to look over to the door to the bedroom and on the back of it my robe was hanging there and when i looked over the bath robe was literally crawling up the wall like that's what it looked like it was doing and i don't know why i didn't freak out when i saw that i just was like hmm that's weird and then just a couple minutes later i look up at the ceiling and my ceiling fan moving across the ceiling and again, I was like, wow, that's really weird. I must be really tired, so I should probably go to sleep. So I just went to sleep. I don't remember doing anything to prepare to leave, but the next thing I remember, I'm in my car driving down the driveway to leave. And this was at seven o'clock in the morning and I had nothing to do that day, so there was no reason for me to be leaving the house at 7 a.m. I think in my mind, my intentions were that I was going to see my boyfriend, and he lived about an hour and a half from me at the time, so I think that was my intention. My parents told me, you know, they saw me leaving at 7 a.m., and they were like, hmm, I wonder what Kayla's doing leaving at 7 a.m the area and the road that we lived on was you know pretty quiet not a lot of traffic and people around and especially at 7 a.m so i'm driving down the driveway and i turn and go up another dirt road that like goes off from our driveway it's kind of a wooded area the whole drive and this was actually like it was on back roads there wasn't a lot of traffic around and then i get to the end of that dirt road and this is honestly not really that far away from the house comes out to a paved road that's also a back road i drive just a little ways down that paved road and i just stop in the middle of the road and put my car in park 
and I get out, I go around the car and I get in the passenger seat. And all of a sudden this guy pulls up behind me and I honestly don't really know what he asked me. Like he probably said, is your car broken down or is there something wrong? Can I help you? Why are you in the middle of the road? And when he asked me that, I'm like, I can't move the car. He's upset and he won't drive any further. And the guy looked at me and he's like, there's no one in your car. What are you talking about? I remember in my mind, I was looking at the seat of my car and the headrest had these like two slits in it, like eyes. And that was the person that I was hallucinating was there. It was freaking creepy now that I, you know, look back on it. I was just like thinking that there was a person there and he was upset and he wasn't gonna drive any further. So that's why we're not moving and we're in the middle of the road. I don't know what happened with what the guy said or anything, but he probably got really weirded out. So somehow or another, he got me to get in my car and he was able to convince me to like move it like off the road. He apparently called the cops to come check it out and see what the heck was going on with me. And he left. Cause I'm sure he was like, what in the living hell is this girl on? <laughs> in the time that it took for the cops to arrive to where I was, I apparently got back out of the car again and there was no one around this time. I get out of my car and I apparently hallucinated that I did have my dog Snoopy with me. And when I opened the door, he jumped out of the car and started running into the woods. That's what I was hallucinating. That's what I was seeing, but it, he wasn't there. And I start flipping out. I, I can't imagine like if someone was there watching me do this, like what the hell they were thinking. <laughs> because I ran across the road after this dog that wasn't even there and I start sprinting through the woods, breaking limbs down and like yelling my dog's name and telling him to come back to me and I'm crying. I finally like stopped and again, this is another hallucination. I hallucinated that this random lady was sitting in the woods and she was holding my dog. He was like, He's okay, um, so you don't have to worry about him anymore. And apparently when she said that, I was like relieved for some reason. And then I just turn around and just walk back to my car. I don't know if that was just to assure me that my dog was okay, but I walk back to my car and for some reason, I get behind the driver's seat in the floorboard. By this time, I had made up this scenario, but in my brain, I had came up with this scenario that my parents were in the front seat and my little sister was in the back seat with me and we were all in the car and we were gonna drive to these waterfalls to spend the day as a family. Complete hallucination, none of this was true. So anyways, I'm sitting like with my knees to my chest in a ball in the floorboard. And at this point, I'm hallucinating that my parents have pulled over and they're not gonna drive any further because there was something like wrong with them. And the next thing I remember is this cop standing at the driver's side door like staring at me. He had a mustache and sunglasses on and he was standing there looking at me and he's like, what are you doing? And then I start telling him, my family and I are going to the falls for the day and there's something wrong with my parents and we're pulled over and they won't go any further and they're not gonna drive us to the falls. And then I tell him my dog ran off into the woods and I don't know where he went, he's lost and I'm really upset. All of this random stuff, I'm just like blurting out to this cop. He was like, uh, I think you need to step out of the car. And he reached in so that he could like pull me up and get me out of the floorboard. He's like looking at me. There's nobody here with you. What are you talking about? So when he started saying stuff like that, I get really angry and I start yelling at him. I honestly, I don't even remember what I was saying. Then he was asking me all these questions. What are you on? Like what drugs did you do? And 
are you drunk? And then it just made me even more angry. And I start back talking to him again. Two more cop cars pull up and they start to search my car. Inside and out, they start searching my car, looking for alcohol or drugs or some something that is causing me to act like a complete nutcase. And of course, they didn't find any of those things because I wasn't intentionally drinking or intentionally doing illegal drugs or anything. And then they did a breathalyzer and of course I passed it. They start doing like a really in-depth test for people that like drink and drive or people that they suspect are not sober. They do like the walk in a straight line, one foot in front of the other. They told me to start trying to repeat the alphabet forwards and backwards. They um, told me to stand on one foot for a certain amount of time and all of these like random things that they do. I was focusing so hard on trying to do those things that they were telling me to do perfectly. I passed that test with flying colors, I wasn't drunk and I was completely able to do things. I was able to walk in a straight line and I was able to talk, but the only thing that was wrong with me was that I was severely hallucinating. So after they did that more in-depth test, then I start yelling and crying and screaming, yelling profanities at them because they were arresting my parents for being on crack. Where does this stuff come from? I don't know. The cops are like, what is wrong with you? There is no one with you and all this stuff is not real. You're making it up. I, the more that they argued with me, the more furious I became. And they started accusing me of doing illegal drugs and I started saying like, yeah, I do take drugs. I have this mitochondrial disease and this illness and at the time I had a feeding tube. Some of you may not know what this is, but it's like a J tube. Um, which goes into your small intestine and that's how I was being fed was by formula through a J tube. After all of this like stuff that I was making up, you think they really would be believing me that I had this illness. They started accusing me of making that up too. That really, really upset me. So I'm like, if you don't believe I have this disease, then why don't you look at this? And I was going to reach down and grab my shirt and pull it up just so you could see my belly and you could see the tube coming out of my abdomen so that he could see I had an illness. And right as I was about to pull my shirt up, the cop starts going, no, 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 that I was going to pull my shirt up and flash my boobs at him. Then I only pulled it up like halfway and then he like relaxed and was like, oh, oh my God, I thought she was gonna flash me. But then when he saw my feeding tube, he started being like, okay, well maybe this girl is telling the truth about having an illness. I keep bringing up that they're arresting my parents for being on crack. Don't arrest them, they're good people. They never do anything wrong. Don't take them to jail. And they're like, would you please stop talking about that? There is nobody with you. They keep telling me that over and over and no matter how many times they would tell me that, I would keep bringing it up. I was getting furious at this point because they keep telling me that my parents aren't here and they're not arresting them. But why do I see my parents over there getting arrested and in handcuffs? I was visually seeing that in my brain. We're like bickering back and forth with each other with me yelling at them. No, how that they weren't like laughing at me or anything, but they were completely calm and serious. I was standing like pretty close to the front of the cop car. This like moment of defeat. I just start crying hysterically and I just flail my arms out and fall onto the hood of one of the cop cars, literally cry with my body flailed across the cop car. Then they finally got me up and they asked for my parents' number. So then they called my parents. They told them what was going on, that their daughter was out here like saying all of this stuff. They don't know what kind of drugs I'm on. So then they also asked my dad if we had a dog named Snoopy and he said, yeah, he's here with us. And he told my dad, he was like, well, she keeps saying that he ran off into the woods and 
he lost and she can't find him. So after they told him what was going on, my parents said, well, just stay there with her until we can come get her and they start driving over to pick me up. And while we were all waiting for my parents to show up, they never like put handcuffs on me or anything like that. They just sat me down in the back of the cop car and the door was still open and one of the cops just stood there and was like talking to me and he kept asking me what could have happened to make me like do this crazy stuff. While I was sitting in the cop car, I started like coming back to myself and thinking a little more clearly and stopped hallucinating quite as much. I told the cop, I'm like, the only thing that it could have been was the fact that yesterday I forgot to take my morning meds and I take a wide variety of stuff and I forgot to take those. And so I took them with my nighttime meds and whatever I took, like all at once must have just been too much or they just mixed together and screwed with my brain. I don't know, but in the meantime, I was still a little off. <laughs> like I was still hallucinating a little bit. So I would be sitting there and I would be like, well, what about my sister in the car? She's by herself. And they're like, there's nobody in the car. They keep telling me that over and over. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then just a few minutes later, I would bring it up again. What about my sister in the car? Why can't she get out? Why can't I go see her? She's probably scared. But then my parents uh, finally showed up and the cops were telling my dad that they were just really glad that I was okay. The situation could have been much worse had they not showed up and, you know, stayed with me. He said, you know, someone could have picked her up and took advantage of her or anything bad like that could have happened because it was just on a back road. I'm very, very grateful to the cops being there all that time with me until my parents were able to come and pick me up. I'm even grateful to the guy that called the cops and then left. What I'm most grateful for out of everything is the fact that they didn't judge me when they you know, figured out what was going on and why I was acting that way. They didn't like charge me with anything. They just told my parents and me that they were glad that I was okay and that nothing bad, you know, became of it. it was a little like off the rest of that day. I mean, I was back kind of in my right mind. I wasn't like hallucinating or anything. It just felt like not normal and really weird the rest of the day, even after the hallucinations stopped. But by the next morning, I woke up and I felt fine and I felt like myself again. So we know that that's the only thing that it could have been, that I took all those medications at one time and they just reacted with each other, I guess or it was just too much for my body to handle. So that is the time that I got whacked out on my medications and embarrassed myself in front of a bunch of cops and people that drove by. Definitely learned my lesson. I always take my medications like they are prescribed. If I miss a dose, then I just say, okay, I'll just have to take it tomorrow. Hopefully maybe this story will um, kind of help some other people learn that, you know, if you're on medications and you miss a dose, don't take it with your other medications at the wrong time of the day. Just be very, very careful with medications and the way that you take them and just be sure that you take them how your doctor prescribes them to you. But now it's just kind of a really funny story to look back on. So I hope that you all had a little laugh and enjoy. I definitely have more story times that I can do in the future. Let me know down in the comments if you would be interested in seeing a video on my illness. That's pretty much all I have to share with you in this video today. So thank you so, so very much for taking the time to listen. And I hope that you are having a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I will see you all in my next video.